The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter, and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Welcome to the Weekend Podcast with Steve. Just me this That's week. It. Steve, and it's cold. Steve, I yeah. tell you what, it's everywhere. It's, yeah. it's almost like a symbolic for 2022. It was, it's been awful, and then it ends on a crap note, you know, because with a cough and a cold. And no mm. Santa rally. Santa couldn't even put in a, an appearance. And generally, Santa rally doesn't happen. Then January's not very good either. So that's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, positive thinking ahead. It's yeah, great, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've had that cough and cold. It's awful. It's gone around the house. Mm. I've had a cold, right? I had a week of cold and coughing. Lost it about three or four days. In fact, when you came down, and then had it again for a week. I'm well, still you got probably the co- gave it to us then. <laughs> yeah, I've still got the cough. It literally, it's, it's, it's petering out a bit, but it's still there. It's a nightmare. I, um, a lot of people are blaming, aren't they? Um, did, COVID. You test, did, you, uh, did you test the COVID or did you just not bother? I didn't bother that rubbish anymore. Mm. But it is, it's, yeah. it is, I was chatting to a couple of people and they're saying it is COVID related, whatever it is, mm. um, because... We've been so, you know, the lockdowns didn't help because what you don't understand is the body, when we're out and about mixing with people, it's constantly dealing with viruses all the time, you know, and these, most of these viruses it, it don't get as bad enough to, to raise a level to give you cough and cold. But because your body is building up immunity all the time, that is good for it. Now, because we're locked away for a long period of time, killing germs, washing our hands a lot, all that stuff, then our body's not used to it, you know? Mm. It's like we're not battle ready anymore. It's like, you know, going into a war, but not being trained. That's what it is. Yeah. So you've, well, been out, you've been out and about mingling, you know, mingling, Stevie, yeah, yeah. and uh, it's, have you been kissing any girls? Well, uh, I'm sure that's the time of the year as well. It doesn't help that the fact pretty much every other day I'm going out to see friends for drinks as well, which obviously hey, will not friends. help in the... Uh... Hey, friends, hey, hey, all right. <laughs> are you, uh, you know, are you, are you kissing anyone these days, Steve? No, I'm not actually, no. no oh, okay. I've, given that, I've, given, I've given that up, to be honest. It was... Yeah, okay. it wasn't working out well for me, so... Yeah, well, you can't give up forever, Steve. You're going to get no. back in the date and see, you know what? We're at 2023, new start... Yeah. I'll give it a go next year, but I'm not going to tell you that, obviously. Yeah, OK, they don't tell me Keep that. Keep that quiet from you. But it's been a dreadful year. As far as the market's concerned, one of the worst years ever I've ever experienced. I've mm. probably lost about 50% of my portfolio value in 12 months. And it's yeah. been gut-wrenching, painful, horrible. And, um, and there doesn't seem to be a, an instant uh, end to it. End to it, yeah, coming back, so which is even more. I, I, it's, not I think, so bad, it's not so bad when you think, okay, this is short term, but actually, <laughs> when is it going to end? I think it will. I think we're going to see maybe a quarter of volatility, and I think it'll get better. I think, you know, it, it, I don't know about you, but you shop for yourself, right? Now, um, you know, Megan's obviously shops for does all the shopping and that stuff, and she's noticed certain prices of things now coming down a little bit, especially sort of petrol, diesel. In fact, she doesn't buy both, of course, just diesel. But uh, diesel's yeah. come down, petrol's come down. And that's, you know, that's a huge help to people's finances. And, of course, mortgage rates are not going to be as high as they previously predicted. So that's mm. good. So things well, are even coming my, down. Even my, even my um, energy firm, because I'm still with Bulb before they transfer over to Octopus, I think it is. Yeah. Um, but I had an email from the last week, and they said they reduced their prices. Only, it was actually quite a bit so good news, we reduced our prices. And it, I was looking at the prices from what it was and what it is, or changing to it. I was like, it's the same price. It was literally 0.3 of a penny. <laughs> I was like, is that, yeah. what, was there any point sending that email out? Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but the thing is, the good thing, the, the things that, you know, what we're seeing is peak inflation. That's quite good. You know, and uh, it's not going to go straight down. But the market has priced everything in, every bit of bad news in. Um, and, you know, so there's, there's no good news priced in. You know, if we do suddenly have a, a big drop, one of these, you know, one of these readings in inflation, the market hasn't priced that in. It's likely to happen because if you notice, a lot of people have cut back on spending. And, and that, you know, has the market is very efficient. If you, if you demand less, you know, they supply less, the price goes down. It's just supply and demand. That's the way it works. But you know what? This year, and this is a, this is a, this is a I've been already been doing it, but this year, and I've already been doing it, I'll be moving out of companies that are not generating cash. And that's a very important because um, risk capital is, is close to being almost non existent. And do you, know what I mean? do, you know, do you know what I mean when I say risk capital, Steve? Capital that's risk. Yeah, yeah, essentially, yes. I mean, during a bull market, you know, when money was cheap, 
the cash is free flowing. You know, investors are willing to take bigger risks with their cash or capital in return for a bigger reward. So big risk, big reward. That's why macro caps, all that kind of stuff, do very well in bull markets. You know, because people are looking at the future potential uh, of the assets. And this ha- this is very easy when asset prices are rising, like we've had over the last almost you know ten years up until sorry, a year and a half ago. Um, and but trouble is, inflation has gone up. Interest rates have gone up, which has led to the cost of capital going up, led to economic uncertainty. It's made capital very expensive. They've also seen a, you know, a brutal sell-off in the markets. And this has made now investors risk-averse. You know, and, you know, people have seen their portfolio values go down significantly in 2022, and they no longer want to risk any more money. And that's what I'm saying. You know, I've talked to so many companies, so many CEOs, saying there's no money out there. You can't raise money. If you can, it's very hard terms. The odd company may do it now and again, uh, but um, generally, there's no money out there. People don't want to. I mean, this is all levels of investor. I'm not talking about just, just private investors. I'm talking about institutional investors, everyone. They, they, they would only put their money into something that's very safe and going to get them a return. And so with private investors, you know, they've gone from wanting to make money, risking their money to make money, to now thinking, okay, how can I not lose money? And that's a different dynamic, and that's how a, bull, a bear market's formed. People, and the easiest way for people to do that is pull their money from the market. They just pull it out. Cash outflow happens. And then, of course, share prices go down. People see themselves then, oh, my stocks are falling. I'll sell. And so it's self-fueling. You know, it keeps mm. going and going and going until, oh, I'm a, and so, you know, future, potentials, uh, future potential stocks hold less appeal now than, than current value generation businesses. So businesses that are generating cash, they don't need other people's money to, to get the growth and get the property. Those are where it's at. And, um, and I think, you think, you know, why would the average person want to risk any more capital? You've got to be a sucker for punishment and pain if you're prepared to put more money into the market, into sort of, you know, future potential stocks, when they've been killed over the last 12 months. It's, you know, why would you keep knocking your head against the wall? After a while, you think, sod it. I'm not going to keep doing it anymore. I'm just pulling my money. And that's what's happened to the matter caps, especially, you know. There, mm. there will come a time again when they'll fly. But I don't think it'll be for a while. I mean, I said, you know, you, you know when you get a company that needs other people's cash to grow their operations, to hopefully get a profitable situation, it's, it, it's, it's not viable anymore. Uh, people don't want to give them the cash. So uh, it's going to be painful for a while, matter caps, but they will roar back to life. But you either take the pain or you get out. And most people have had too much pain. It's been pain for like, you know, 12 months. And I've got to say, I have reduced my holdings across the board on micro caps. I now hold a decent chunk of cash. And um, so I hold sort of five companies still in that area. But I believe they're now undervalued. Uh, they believe the growth is still there. They've been, they take the massive knocks. Uh, but, but, I'm going to say, for the foreseeable future, I will now only look at companies that don't need other people's cash to get to that profitability. You know, they, they are generating their own cash. Uh, and also, not only that, I've, been, I've, I've got to the stage now, I'm thinking, if I'm going to risk my cash, right? if I'm going to invest in a company, I want something in return quite soon. And that means dividends. Uh, and, and so I'm actively looking for good, com- excellent businesses. In fact, on the webinar, do you join the webinar anymore, Steve, on the, on the, on the weekdays? No, occasionally I do. Um, yeah, I think last time I was in about the summertime. Oh, thanks, Steve. Uh, so occasionally, yeah, I'm just busy. How, I'm how, just how occasionally is that? We're now in December. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he said, you know, well, I, I, you know, I occasionally go for a run. When's the last time we did it? In the summer. <laughs> oh, okay. So you hardly a <laughs> fitness for, hardly a fitness fanatic then, are you? But, uh, that's, that's about right, and that default as well. So, yeah. Henry, does, does that mean you sold your um, you, you sold out of all stocks at quite a loss? Then, if you've done that to get into cash, well, some of them I, I was still I was in early, luckily. But um, yeah, I've reduced a lot. But l- luckily, I mean, the things like uh, you know, I, I've put money into things like uh, K three Capital, which had a buyout, and I sold that and stuff of like that. So I've just got cash there. But I mean, you've already but, sold that. Yeah, they've sold it. The offer was three three fifty. It was like three forty two, and I thought, shall I hold on? And then you get the offer period that goes through. And then the shares get delisted for a while. And you have to wait for them to transfer the cash. So I'm not going to sit there for three months when I could have got three, you know, forty odd a share rather than three fifty. It's not a lot of difference. So yeah, I, I raised my cash in that. But um, yeah, and, and Joe, I was talking on the webinar, Steve. Right now is the time. I mean, first and foremost, for yourself, there. If you're not like a full time active investor. You know, you should have 40, 50% in a fund, full stop. Mm. 
And that way, you keep putting regular money into that. You will earn good money over time. That's your, yes, yes, your retirement fund. And you'll keep earning that. And you, you've got that pretty much. And you've got 40%. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, regardless of what the market's doing, those kind of things, you should put a, a little monthly amount in, a regular amount in, because then you will get the best price over the long term. And uh, like I said, we are at now in a, in a bear market. Um, who knows how long it lasts for? I, I can't see well, it lasting a lot longer. The funds aren't too bad at the moment. They're not really that far down, to be honest. They're just <laughs> flat at the moment. They've pretty much come back to where they were and just stayed there. They're just not doing anything. Is that the so, um, is that the uh, Vanguard? Vanguard, yeah, because, equity. Yeah, because that's invested in, you know, about 5,000 stocks around the world. So if you look at the FTSE 100, which is a you know, large international index, really, so the FTSE 250 is, is, is more domestic companies. But the FTSE 100, a lot of those companies earn their, uh, their money in dollars and stuff. Dollars have been very strong. They're also oil and gas producers. Oil prices have been very strong. So you've got a very that's, – that's exactly why you need that kind of diversification. So when everything else is sold off – that fund there, of course, it, it, it won't do, you know, m- multiples in a year, uh, no any of that. But you'll get, you know, a decent sort of um, 8, 10, maybe even 20% in a good year. But on average, I think it's around about 10% you'll get on that, which is decent, you know. It's, it's not going down. Now, people are heading more towards that, that kind of stuff, uh, than, than the stuff where you can get sort of higher risk, higher reward. Because, of course, you know, at least you can guarantee pretty much a, de- a decent return in that fund over the next year or so, even if the market sell off, because it's very well diversified. But, I mean, I was talking about on, on the webinar saying, now is the chance to diversify a bit into, if you've got cash or you're sick of microcaps, um, because micro, I believe microcaps will, will be hard for a while. Any, any company not generating cash, it'll be hard for them for a while, but they will roar back to life. But if you have the patience, stay with them. If they're good companies and they're improving fundamentally, stay with them. But if you want to, you know, there's, there's now an opportunity. If you go back to that great financial crash, one of the best investments ever made was in Lloyds Bank. It was quite risky. I did put all my money into it, and I, I, was, I was averaging about thirty pence, I think. But uh, it started going down. At, I think it hit about twenty-one pence. But it went back to eighty odd pence after the after the bailout. No, that was a great financial crash, and financial assets, banks were the, the biggest sector at risk, and they were in a bit of risk, a bit of problem there. So they did sell off. But right now, okay, if you look at what the problem is right now, one of the biggest sectors being affected are like house builders, right? But house builders. They're amazing businesses. They have no. I was looking at the top sort of five, you know, so Persimmon, Barrett, Tillawimpy, uh, Redrow, all that. They have no debt or very little debt. They're, ch- they're checking out loads of cash. They pay dividends. They've got a massive amount of cash. And like Persimmon are down like 50%. But they're nowhere near where they were. You know, they've got cancellations. Their cancellations rate has gone up from about 14% to 24%. And now is not the time because it's still in a downtrend. But. You can now upgrade your portfolio if you've got spare cash and you can get a dividend paid to you. And they, they are, I mean, they may cut their dividends, but right now I think the dividends are around about in excess of 8%, the dividends are, and they've got a huge amount of cash to cover that as well. So, it's, but it, they may reduce that, but it'll still be a decent dividend, and yet you've still got upside. So, there are, there are great. So, the difference is if you, with, with micro cap stocks, you are investing in companies that are newish that you hope will be a brilliant business. Now, with these bigger companies that are mature, they are brilliant businesses. They've taken a hit. What's the chance of them going back to becoming a brilliant business? Quite high. You know, it's quite mm. a high probability. You know, it's like Lloyd's Bank. They earn money. We knew that they're a bank. They earn money. They're one of the biggest banks in the UK. They took a massive hit, hit. And there's big risk there, of course, in the great financial crash. But, it, I mean, the house builders are nowhere near that kind of worry like the, great, like the banks were in back then. But... You know, you have this chance now. Okay, the reward is not, you know, to get you know, several hundred percent in a year. But microcaps for a while aren't going to do that, I don't think. But you can get a very decent return, even returns to sort of, you know, halfway to where they were, plus paying a dividend. That is a great return on a very low risk business. Let's be honest. One of the goals people have in this country is to own a house. The house market is not going to collapse. Okay, you may see house prices soften for a while, but there's always going to be a. V- it's, it's one of these. When you look at the, you know, when I look at companies and look at the um, macro caps, I say, okay, look at the sector they're in. Will the sector be bigger in 10, 20 years' time? Look at house building. People always. We, we have a chronic shortage of houses. They're always going to be built. 
people's ambition in this country is always to own a house. That's never going to go away. And then you've got the house builders taking a knock. They'll, they'll revert to norm, you know, in, in two, three years' time. But in the meantime, uh, you could get you know, dividend paying in excess of 7 8% on that money. So that's what I'm saying. At the moment, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at cracking businesses that have been massively hit by the downturn. And I'm going to take my time, uh, but I will be starting to do it. And I'll, I'll still apply the old, you know, 50 moving average, 200 moving average to, to, to ensure back in an uptrend, monitor the fundamentals, but also look, make sure they're back into an uptrend. Because there's another stock called Future PLC, amazing advertising business. You know, you visited one of their websites. I think one in two people in this country have visited their websites as well as America. So they're a huge company, uh, well, amazing business, huge margins. Uh, they've got a little bit of debt there, but they'll get back to their former glory. And um, it's like, that's the kind of the trade-offs you have to make. Do you want to put your money into a business you hope will become good or a business with a little less reward but less, a lot less risk because you know they'll be a great business again? They've got a proven track record there. They've got the operations. It's all efficient. It's all good to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you want to do, Steve? Um was persimmon the the homes the the builders we were looking at a couple of years ago that I'm sorry we invested in a a, a builders I don't know maybe was it persimmon uh, persimmon uh, let's have a look I uh, can't remember what was the ticker on that PSN PSN no it wasn't that it was something else uh, B Dev uh, Barrett Developments B D E or mm. Bellway or Telewimpy um, it could have been was that. or Gleason is a, is a smaller one it's a good one but right now they are sort of bottoming out you know and thinking okay when will the housing market pick up again uh, because they'll start to the rally before that happens. You know, they have had cancellations because people have, you know, got mortgages and stuff. Uh, and the, the fallout, I mean, largely the, the figures they're reporting on now includes the period where Truss and Quateng released that mini budget. Good job it wasn't a big one. Um, but the, and, and also, you know, loads of mortgage offers were pulling their pr- products, weren't they? They're saying, we yeah. can't offer a mortgage. So they've had a lot of cancellations because of that. Now, looking forward, I think it'll get a bit better because now at least prices are stable. Even if they're at a heightened level, interest rates-wise, you can't get a mortgage as cheap as you could, then at least now... You know, there there are mortgage products out there. And in fact, the government have extended, I don't know if you saw that this week, uh, there's a scheme to help um, people get a loan-to-value rate of 95% and they would guarantee a certain amount to get people to deposit again on the on the housing ladder. So that's there. And, and uh, like I said, have you ever, you know, even, I don't know when you bought your house, Steve, when did you buy your place? 2004-ish, 2005. Mm. So that was a bit of a... A bull market, wasn't it then? Or not? Or was it quite frothy um, then? Oh, I can't. I wasn't really into investing. Mm. Then, so I didn't, didn't, don't know. But, um, yeah, no, I, th- I think the, pr- the house prices had shot up, haven't they? Because I think they, they were at quite lows in the late 90s, weren't they? And they kind of started going up over the that next five to seven years, didn't they? So yeah, I probably, well, didn't buy, uh, probably didn't buy it as low as I could have. I, I think I remember thinking if I'd bought two years earlier, I would have literally saved tens of thousands of pounds on the house. But, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, do, do you know what? It's, it's, it's like that. We, well, if you look over the last, you know, 50 years, uh, house, if you look at uh, so, yeah, house price... House price rises uh, in UK last, you know, 20 years, say. Um, uh, and it, look at that. Average house price increase by a 9.6% year in year, 2020. In fact, even with a drop right now, it's still 9.6% for the year. So, you know, and, and if you go back... You know, you are seeing your house prices go up by, you know, 5% at least every year. Pretty much, so it's a very bullish market, and that you never get you're never going to get a, pl- a, a, a a time in 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 this history in the UK where house prices will just drop off a cliff. Never, gonna, it's never going to happen. You may see a softening of prices, but largely that's come from a bubble. You know, like I said, Gary over the road there sold sold his house, top of the market. There were people queuing to go and see his bungalow, and he sold it. There's people fighting for it above the offer price, and he sold it like about sorry, 10 15 percent above what he asked for it. And that's happened. We've seen that bubble, but we're going to see house prices soften a bit, but not large, not below you know what 
where they were like a couple of years back, it'll just be back to where they were a year back. So, you know, so it, it's fine. But I, I yeah, think, and, um, it was, and it was also impossible to buy a house because it's yeah. that simple reason, wasn't it? It's like everyone was trying to buy a house, whereas now I think it was just, it's more realistic to actually be able to buy a house now and <laughs> go view it before it gets taken off the market because, yeah. Uh, yeah, as you said, someone's paid over the odds for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, in fact, uh, you know, a typical example of... Um, of uh, things being hit. I mean, my accounts at the moment, I said, are going to be hit. Did you see Gfinity today? Down 40%. No, I didn't. That's nice to hear. Yeah. Wow. Basically, they came in the figures. They weren't, you know, as good as people thought. And I said, unless in this environment, unless your company figures exceed expectations, it's going to be hit, pretty much, especially in microcaps. Were they Were they really bad, or...? Well, they did. Uh, I, don't, uh, I thought even the doubling on their half year, they should have seen over six million in, in revenue, really. But they did like five point three, I think. But I mean, there, there's some good news in there, uh, and that's they are, you know, their GDM business with higher margin is is uh, increased by thirty three percent. But of course, the, the higher revenue bit of the company, but they they lost making they got cash there. But um, it's just one of these things. Is you know, again, there's no investor appetite at all. People are risk averse, and that, that, it comes back to that. You know, people don't want to risk any money anymore, so they see anything bad, they're just jumping out everything and selling to get selling. Uh, and this market is it's the worst time. And I think you know, from every level of investor, no one wants to risk any money anymore. You know, if you've been, as, you know, if you've been hit over the head with a hammer for eighteen months, in the end, you just walk away from it. You know, don't don't keep standing there saying, "Oh, come on, keep hitting me." It's it's just people don't want to risk any money anymore. So uh, uh, the new yeah, way, just, look, just looking now, yeah, forty three percent down. Jeez, that's. That's taking a hit to my portfolio. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, oh. no, it, but the thing is, it, the market will get easier. It'll bounce back. But it's just, bloody, well, it's, it's absolutely uh, 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 you know, brutal. And, and, and why I say invest in cash generative stocks, it's, you know, it's odd because in a, in a bull market, you don't need to look at future potential and stuff. There's no price for that anymore. The, 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 the people only value current valuations, current generation. Now, generally, the market looks ahead by you know a couple of years and looks for the potentials of companies. That isn't there anymore. Every big company is sold off. Even you know, Amazon, Apple, all those big companies have all sold off. And it gets down to the point where, how cheap can those companies get? Well, if you are you know adding cash to your balance sheet, you know on a daily basis, uh, and you are valued around about your net assets, and you keep adding cash, then the, the share price will be supported. It won't be as volatile. Because essentially, the business is, you know, there's no potential priced in. All it's valued on is assets. So they went on and say, what's the point of that? We're growing every year, but we're not. So that's where they get cheap. And we are seeing lots of companies like that at the moment. You know, companies are valued at their asset level, their asset level. And, that's, and if they're generating cash, of course, the real value of that company has gone up, even if it's not reflected the share price. And then that's an opportunity. But if, you, if you've got a company like that that's paying you dividends as well, then you know it's because it, if you're because mm. you're acquiring a business essentially you go in there and, and you know you you, you very you, you, it's very rare you can acquire a business at its net asset value that's really you know below because essentially you're buying the business and the potential of the business so you're looking at the earnings as well going forward so that's why you give a multiple of earnings so now companies are sitting there at net asset values it's like the bare bones of an investment pretty much and so there is a massive opportunity here. But until the market changes, until the sentiment changes, there's no point diving in. No point at all. Because there's, there's cash outflow. And if there's cash outflow, it's like literally swimming against the current. No point, is it, really? You know? yeah. No point. So um, that's why I'm sitting with cash. But, I mean, for you, Steve, that, you know, I, I'm going to start... I mean, essentially, going forward, this is, this is what I'm going to do with my, my, um, my portfolio value. Um, I'm going to have about. Tw- uh, I'm going to use funds pretty much as a cash source. I haven't started going into funds yet, and in fact, I'm going to do the same with my son's uh, money. Um, but I will have about twenty to thirty percent in funds um, because I'm a bit more active than the. But, but as far as microcaps concerned, they've got to have growth. They've got to be EBITDA profitable, and they've got to have cash. But I will not allocate more than five percent of my initial investment into any one of those companies. Because it's too risky, and in fact, going forward, I'm not looking for any more of those companies. I've got, you know, five of those companies already. Uh, for companies that are cash generative, you know, good value, paying dividends, um, then I'm going to put maximum ten percent of, of initial investment into those. And so, but take your time. It's like the bear market. 
It's like, you mm. know, you, you it's don't, not going to be changing soon. Yeah, you don't mind running into the sea if the swell isn't there, if the waves aren't there. Just sit there and wait, wait for the wait for it to happen. You know, wait for it to come on down. Uh, but anyway, but that's the thing. Like, 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 not like a couple of years ago. I, to, like reading that on Gfinity, uh, seeing that down and how much money I've lost today on my portfolio, that would have like sunk my heart. I've come a bit emotionless to it now. I'm like, do you know what? I'm just gonna let it sit there now and <laughs> just, yeah, just 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 wait. Cause well, that's well, do you know what? That's a good thing though. It's like, almost like um, either you get out and take a massive loss. Or you think, hang on a sec, they're turning over, what, what's, 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 you know, they're turning over, okay, they, they, they're loss making at the moment. But remember, people have to remember, these results were the end of the June, you know, so you, you assume they've improved since. And I said, they're, 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 at the moment, what people are looking at is how much money they're losing, not the potential they could make, but how much money they're losing. Uh, but that's that's going down significantly, you know, they reduce um, the cash burn massively. So... Uh, so going forward, so they've reduced the cash burden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah every okay. every year. So and also, you know, they're more reliant now on higher margin, you know, sort of yeah. ad revenue. G, G- and, and to be fair, they, as, as you said, like ages ago, they are sticking to what they said they're doing, and you know, yeah. and it's it it seems to be going the right way in that respect. So, it's, yeah. Do you know what? It's, it's it's a telling sign, even when esports, which is a very fast growing area. That uh, you know, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if someone with a bit of risk there, a bit of capital, says, "I'm going to buy into that. I'm going to buy it because now they are trading at seven million market cap. They, you know, the revenue is five point was it five point three? Um, so yeah, uh, they got cash closing in cash two point one million, two point seven million of unexcised warrants. So they got cash there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's like everything oversells. Um, so you know, if you've got the patience, just sit there. If it, if it doesn't give you too much pain. You know, because sometimes you'll sit there looking at, you know, people keep checking their portfolio over and over. I've done that so many times. And it gives you so much pain, you just, I just have to cut the pain. You know, get rid of it, yeah. just cut it. But if you've got no. patience, if it doesn't bother you too much and you haven't got too much invested in there, just sit and wait because it's going to bounce. When, when the markets turn a bit, they will turn. And I think in the mm. next, you know, next quarter, next two quarters, it will turn. Um, so, you know, and, the, and the, the, the turning point for that is, you know, inflation coming down, interest rates stopping to go up. And then we get a bit of normality then. But, uh, yeah, I see a bit more pain bit, bit more pain in the markets for a while. But uh, I'm sitting on cash because I've taken too much pain and I need to ease that pain. And cash is my painkiller. Yeah, no, I get yeah. it. I, I'm going to play the dead man role. Yeah, well, that's a good stat on that, isn't it? Do you see that? Yeah. Fidelity, yeah, Fidelity once, the, the Fidelity checked over all their funds, did a massive audit, and they found the best performers were dead people. Yeah, so, that, <laughs> so I am. I'm going to be playing the dead man. Yeah, because of course people, you know, people with emotions, check out during the bear markets and sell at a loss. Was the dead people? Uh, they hadn't shut the accounts down. Yeah. Didn't they're, not, they're not reactive, are they? <laughs> they're the least active, most passive investors of all. They just <laughs> said, um, "Yeah, we're, we're not bothered, really. We're not. We're not bothered." That's a dead person. And then over time, they just, the markets rebound. And <laughs> the multi-billionaires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the markets rebound, and of course, we know the stat about you know the best time to invest ever is you know. After a, a, a bear market, and so when people have sold out, and they've checked out and turned off, and then the bear market ends, the, the bull market starts, a massive rally happens, your stocks will, will gain about 50% within a couple of months, and then they'll plateau, and then all of a sudden, they'll start running again. And then the crowd has sold out lower, I start getting again then. You know, they've, on, you've sold a lot lower than you bought, so if you're dead, you wouldn't worry about any of that. You just think, okay, mm. I'll, I'll just sit here. Um, uh, so what are you doing for Christmas, Steve? Uh Pretty normal stuff. Just going to go and see my family. Yeah, it's, uh, see the parents, and I think yeah, I'm dropping in for like my sisters and nieces and nephews throughout the day. So trouble is, though, you're going to spread viruses. That's all you spread love and cheer and goodwill, Steve. Or wow. you're going to spread the but, virus. You need to wear but, a mask. I caught a cold last weekend, and it kind of it was bad last weekend, and it kind of disappeared. And now it's just at that kind of annoying. I haven't actually got a cold now. I've just got that coughing post yeah. cough the cold thing so i'm pretty sure i'm probably not contagious now but i have avoided the uh the family but uh, i think by the weekend i'm pretty sure i'll be non-contagious over over a week yeah, yeah. It's, it. it's um 
Yeah, and no, to be honest with you, and to yeah. be honest with you, I don't think my parents care. Like, if I, I'm sure if I turn around and said I'm not coming around because I don't want to give you a cold, I think they'd be more annoyed about that than me giving them a cold on Christmas Day. But there we go. Yeah, but hang on, but yeah, but do you know what? It's a sticker. Honestly, my father's got it, and he's been. Oh, well, I know, I know. Like, I, 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 his chest is rattling again. Older people, you got to be careful, Steve. Maybe, they, maybe you have your food in the garden, and they just pass it out to you. You know. Maybe, maybe. And, and an umbrella. <laughs> my, yeah, my, Steve. My, yeah. Things are my mum's a sociable she she goes out all the time, so chances are she's gonna catch it from someone else anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well we are do you know what we're going to go to the mother in laws? Do you know why? Because uh, it's, it's it's the ironic thing is, right, it's peeing down with rain here, right? Yeah. But, but well, we, we got, it was yeah. when we started the podcast it was horrible here. Now the sun's out and it looked beautiful outside. Well, fact, the sun's contrast. coming out. Yeah, but do you know what? The, if it's peeing down the rain for the last like twenty four hours and um, we just come back from seeing my parents in Wales. And we got a text from uh, Vanessa, our friend on the road, saying, oh, the water's being cut off. So what? Water? We've gone from a hosepipe ban in the summer. In fact, the hosepipe ban has only just ended. And then they cut the water off. I said, why is that? We can't keep up with demand. What demand? I think, yeah, we, what? It's, come, it's coming from the skies, the water is. It's in bucket loads coming. I wish I had a water butt in my, in my, uh, in my garden. I wouldn't need anything. But um, apparently... Because of the fr- freezing, the f- lots of pipes have cracked, and you know it's, it's leaking everywhere. So there's water leaking everywhere, and they yeah. can't they, they can't um, process or t- treat the water they need for demand. And then uh, we were driving home last night, right? And then Vanessa, Vanessa did some water stations down by the leisure centre, but the, the queues are mad for the water. They're getting about three bottles of water, and I th- and I thought, do you know what? Water as a resource. There's no bigger, is, is it, precious resource than water. We yeah. all need it to live. We're like 88% or 90% water, humans are. So they, that is scary. And so Megan then went into, uh, just, uh, said, let's stop just outside Charles Ford because in this area there's been a lot of demand for water for the supermarkets. So have you literally got no finger at your taps then? It's, it's, it's restricted apparently. So ours, uh, but some people apparently got no water. We've, we're sort of good at the moment, but um, the pressure's gone down. So they're re- restricting pressure. But um, so we stopped in Waitrose and Megan rushed in to buy some bottles of water. And uh, she texted me from inside and said, no water. Oh, and then you started panicking. You think, we've got no water. I mean, it's okay there's no diesel, no petrol. Fair enough, you can get away with that sometimes. But no water. It would be fine because, like, the, 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 the water companies will put big tankers in the streets, don't they, when it gets that bad. So, yeah, you know, but is, is that sort of almost a, a second of panic, you know? Thinking, water's serious, man. <laughs> so you, you, you need water. Have yeah. you got like a, a, a garage full of um, that prime drink? I think you'd be all right on yeah, that yeah, for a couple yeah, of years. Exa- yeah, exactly. We're living on prime. <laughs> but uh, so I did have a, it's so, wired to hell for the next year. I know. I did have a, a, a sudden panic attack. No bloody water. What's going on? But um, there we are. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but we, we, we're, in fact, we're going up to, uh, to, up to um, the mother in law's in Essex. We're not affected. Apparently, it's Sussex. Sussex, um, who else is there? So, Hampshire. So it's not just outside, it was our street or something, but it's huge areas. Uh, but I thought, what we're going to do, it's Daphne next door, who's 90. Uh, we bought now, the lady went upstairs in, to check out Waitrose and she'd found eight bottles. And she said, these are the last eight bottles. So, Megan bought them. So, that as a nice little Christmas present, we're going to leave now and give Daphne, you know, Daphne. Eight bottles of water. But you realise how precious that is. Nothing more precious at Christmas than water if you haven't got it. So they go, oh, thank you very much. So we'll do that. But uh, they're going to get, apparently they're going to get it switched back on for Christmas. That's nice, isn't it? That's the yeah. best way to celebrate. When you take something really precious, you don't, you don't really appreciate, you know, because it's there all the time. You take it away from you. Then, oh, my God, and you give it back. You think, oh, that's the gift of Christmas right there, isn't it, almost, you know? It's like, yeah. It's like electricity when they cut that. And you think, oh, where's that electricity? You try to put things on, like lights and ovens and stuff, you can't. And, but I thought, as long as they... I wasn't any... Uh, do you know what? I had a, a, a sudden bit of relief, Steve, right, when I thought they haven't got any water. And I thought, ah, oh, I've still got the internet. <laughs> do you know what? It's got a stage where the internet... It's almost uh, more important these days than water. I can still check my stocks, but maybe switch the internet off. Yeah, yeah. I don't Do want to what? check F- my stocks. Funny enough, Peter's just messaged us on the WhatsApp going, bloody hell, just seen GFIN results and the fallouts. And it's like, yep, turn the internet off. <laughs> don't want to see it. Yeah, well, well I start tell Pete, yeah, we talked about it on the podcast. Actually, Pete, you're going to listen to this. You're going to join in and ask some questions. Mm. But apparently, Pete's working, working from home, all that kind of work. Uh, yeah, working. If you're working, yeah. 
from home. Sometimes you're not really working, are you? You know, you're, you're like having a coffee, looking at me to tell you something. But uh, marvelous. Well, have a nice Christmas, Stevie. And yeah, I, uh, I don't know if this is probably the last one we do before 2023, but uh, 2023 is going to start off. Think of an analogy, Steve. It's going to start off a bit rough, I think, but it's going to get better at the end, and the sun is going to shine towards the end of 2023. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think I, that's. I think that's looking hopeful. I think next year is going to be a write-off. I think 2024 is the year. No, I reckon. I, I know the markets will look ahead. They'll start. See, if 2024 is going to be looking good, we'll start to rally in 2023. Honestly, that's what happens with the markets. They've got to see light at the end of the tunnel. That's it. If it's light at the end of the tunnel, that's all you need. Is it? It's almost like. My analogy for this is literally the marathon. You're doing a marathon and it's killing you and you're literally dying on your feet, but then you see the finish line, you know, or you see that, you see that sign that says one mile left. And you, oh, oh, and then you see the finish line. Once you see the finish line, it's almost like your, your spirits are lifted. That's what, yeah. I think that's what 2024 was, the finish line. Uh, I, ha- I, hope, I hope that's right. But uh, yeah, We'll see. They can't get any... Well, no, I shouldn't say that. You don't say that. Like, that. No, don't say that, no. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Things can only get better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Marvellous. Chief Steve, have a nice Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye. The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.